welcome to Quirky Cooking Chats. I'm here at the Coffee and Clay Cafe in Yungaburra, Far North Queensland, with the owner, Elena, who's a good friend of mine. Huh. Elena's from Venezuela, and she is going to show us how to make her delicious gluten-free arepas today. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, arepas, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, So I shared these recently on my stories, and um, I had a lot of questions about how to make them. So Elena is going to show us. But first of all, a little bit of uh, background on Elena. All right, Elena, take it away. Tell us your story. Salon story. I've been in Australia since 2014, and I came, um, I met my husband in Venezuela, in Margarita Island. I was a soup chef in a tiny restaurant in this magic and beautiful island, and I met him in a ferry, and he told me that he is um, Australian-Argentinian, and I, after 12 years we've been together and he always um he lived in sydney so when we first came we was living in sydney for about three years but he always was telling me about far north queensland and <laughs> he says that it's a magic place a beautiful place that he feels this um part of australia is uh, beautiful and i'm really grateful and blessed to move in from sydney because i had the best four years uh, in this part of Australia, Aww. and I do love it. Yeah. So no more traffic and long commutes to work. No, no. no. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Sydney was really good at the beginning because um, I didn't speak English at the time. Yeah. So it was uh, really good for me just um, to learn how to drive because I came from. A I don't part think of... I would like to learn to drive in Sydney. Well, <laughs> in Venezuela, they have the chance to learn. So I, I learned when I was about 28. And I'm grateful because here is no public transport that you can move from town to town. That's right, up here there. So, yeah, yeah. So, and I had the opportunity to work in the this cafe before with the previous owner for a year. And I was in love with the concept, with the idea, but I thought it was a good chance to me, um, for me bring a little bit of my country to here, especially the concept of, of the word gluten-free. I didn't know that word before. Yeah. Because actually in my country, everything is gluten-free. <laughs> we cook with cassava, with plantains, with cornmeal. And we usually um, don't have these problems with the gluten. Yeah. So I saw a lot of people here asking for gluten-free or their free things. And I just thought, you know what? Probably this needs my hometown recipes. Where, where I know from scratch that I will cook in all my yeah. life yeah. so for me it's natural to yeah. do this so yeah um and some of the recipes that you cook um besides arepas do you want to mention a couple of those yeah yeah we actually start to do here cassava bowls that we call them papa de yuca papa is like a potato in spanish and they call the yuca because yuca is the name that we give to the cassava so we call papita de yuca or papa de yuca and they are filled up with black beans or with a, a chicken or cheese, halloumi cheese. It's Yum. beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful. Do you have also um, patacon, which is a plantain, which is similar to banana, but it's not a banana. It's not as sweet, is it? It's not. It's, I will say, I always, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm right, but I will say it's like the cousin of the banana. Yeah which is similar but not the same in flavor is not actually even the same flavor yeah so we make a sandwich with that and we have here in the shop when you say you make a sandwich with that do you mean you just fry the plantain yes um what we actually do we um cook pre-fry the plantain first and after we um squish it how smash it yeah flatten it flatten it <laughs> yeah <laughs> and and we make like a bread with that. So the good thing about it is like we don't use any other ingredient to, to cook with that. Yeah. We don't use any extra fats or flowers to mix it up. It's just a plantain as it is. Yeah. Deep fry once, uh, flatten it and fry again and you make a sandwich with that. So simple. Yeah, it is. And it's, yeah. it's really healthy because it's like having a banana. Yeah. So you see, it's like really good for you. And one thing that we say in my country, that the banana has these the little seeds that make you happy. <laughs> so that's why... <laughs> that's my, why Elaine is so happy. Yeah, that's why the people from my hometown are happy all the time, yeah. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. All right. So you're going to show us how to make arepas. Do yes. you want to um, give a little bit of an explanation what that is? Well, the arepa, in, we have an arepa in Colombia and Venezuela, but the two countries will use it different ways. So I'm from the coast. So the arepa change in every time that you go in Venezuela. I'm from Maracaibo. So we have a crazy recipe in Maracaibo. And one of them is like we, we fill it up as a sandwich. It's like a pocket. Yeah. But it's a cornmeal flour, which is pre-cooked, right? So it's not like a cornstarch. It's not like a maicena, no. It's a cornmeal. Is it like the maize meal that's soaked in lime or? Similar to the polenta, but I would say that it's a little bit thinner. So it's pre-cooked. So once you add the water, you don't have to cook it you know how the polenta yeah. have to cook mm -hmm. in the stove. So even when we are kids, when the moms are preparing the dough, they give us a little piece of the dough and we eat raw. Yeah, it's, it's not really raw cooked. because it's pretty cooked. Yes, yeah. right. So you can make your own corn yep. one, uh, but you have to, it's a long process to make yeah. it. So I'm not sure what type of corn you use up here, but yeah. Well, you can show us your ingredients. Yes, I will show you. Shall we go look? Yeah. Let's go do it. Okay, so you're making the Adios. arepa, yes. and here we have. Well, basically, I don't use any, you know. Measurements. measurements. <laughs> you cook like joy. I'm like, <laughs> just a pinch of salt. Pinch of salt. <laughs> and I use, if you see, it's a little bit warm, the water. Yeah. Like oh, 15 or 60. I always like to use warm water because um, that helps that the dough be softer and yeah, nicer. Yeah, yeah. I really like the what this you can try it with cold water I know you will see the difference so the way that we say how do you know that this is enough salt for this so I can compare like the sea water ah, okay see? yeah sea water okay yeah, you want so, sea water yeah the, the, <laughs> that, that is a point of salt yeah, yeah. so I have to be really quite because, salty quite salty if you don't want to have something that is like bland, bland. yeah so and then can the we just have a look at what this is? The Arina so this pan. One. There we go. So this is a yellow cornmeal, you see? And it's quite fine. Yeah, it's yeah, really fine. This okay. This. So it's really fine and pre-cooked. So what we do basically, we don't want lumps in the flour. So we work, we add the flour, right? And we mix it up and make sure that it's lumped. No but it's another trick that in my country, people always have this, um, what you put first, the water or the dry flour and the water <laughs> after is like They argue over like, it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not the right way to do because it will have more lamb. It's all right, we're doing it the Elena way. Yeah, so this is, if you saw Venezuelan people, it's like this. <laughs> now, so this is the way because I'm maracucha, yep. I do this way, right? Yep. So here it is. And sometimes if you are making like empanadas or arepas, because it's the same flour for both. Same for both empanadas. So I will, I will show you how to okay. make empanadas and arepa today. Okay. So for the arepa, we don't add um, any oil or anything, right? But sometimes we have this oil that you see here, and this oil has onoto in it. You know the onoto what it is? Um, I've heard of it, but I'm not sure what it is. It's a, this fruit that has these little seeds. I think they have at the back, yeah. I have, let me bring them. Okay. Oh. Enough. They are the seeds, you see? Okay. Oh, I know what they are. Yeah? Yes, um, when we were kids, we called it the lipstick fruit because we'd take it off the tree and paint our lips. <laughs> and you see that has like a little spike. Yeah, yeah, yep. So we sometimes use a little bit you in, just put it in oil to make yeah, it coloured? Yes. Is it so, just for the colour or is there flavour? It gives, it gives a flavour actually also. I want to so smell it. So sometimes the flavour is not like uh, amazing, but it's, I don't know how to explain. Give a, a flavour, yeah. But as it is, it's like, no, but combined with the yeah. onion and the garlic. Yeah, it's layering like, the flavours. And give this beautiful colour to the chicken. Yeah, yeah. This is a chicken that I made. So, so it's no paprika, earlier. it's this oil that makes ah, this chicken looks like that. Okay. So it's, well, pretty simple. So this... That's the texture you this want? This is the texture. And some people, as I said before... It's like Play-Doh. Yeah. So you see how your hands, <laughs> yeah. you see? Yeah. 
But this is perfect good. texture for arepas. Yeah. If you will want to make empanadas, I would recommend leave it a little bit more hard. Okay. Because um, empanadas. that way it will be easier for us. So this is the thing with the arepa. We make like a little round bowl, right? You see? Mm -hmm. And we start to flat, like, you have to do like a circle, so that you mean your hand, mm -hmm. in the middle of your hands, and do like this. Okay. You see? Yep. And. And that's it. And this is the arepa. Beautiful. So everybody has different sizes. So many people make them bigger and fatter. So everybody is yep. different, you see? So, okay. and I put on the grill or comal or budare, yeah. <laughs> and a little trick that we have in my country also, we put like a little lid on top. Okay. So, so in this me. case, I'm making just one, but when I make the whole thing, I put something to cover the top yeah. to help, um, you will see the texture. Okay. Okay, so where do people get this kind of flour? If you are in... Yeah, if you are in far north Queensland, um, I will say if you are in Cairns, you can find in the the jerky nut. Is it so that oh, yeah, can yeah. shop in Cairns? Or if you know, you can come here and we sell the flower here also. Oh, do you? If you are in Yangabara, yes. Um, but what about like, can they get it online? Maybe they can get it online from there if they want a big quantity, and they have white or cornmeal from which that is brand. up to you. Yes. Ah, okay. It's up to everybody. Yeah. There we are. So this is what's in the chicken filling. We've got so what I do, I put red capsicum, red onion, brown onions, garlic, right? And I cook this one. So you saute that? Yes. Yep. In a bit with of olive oil. oil. Oh, in yeah. the anato oil. And this is olive oil with the onoto. Mm -hmm. Because I want to keep the flavors from my country. And I add some salt, some salt and some pepper. Mm -hmm. And you will think that it's a simple, but it's amazing the flavor that is just together together and, and that's what, what i often do. find with um simple food you get yeah it's amazing. amazing combination and the main thing is i boil this one with bay leaves so poached garlic yep. yes yep so this is how we make some people use the roasted chicken but to me i like to keep the tradition as i yep. do have and i do have the stock of this same yep, the chicken, chicken stock. that i made previously and when i um still fry all this together I blend it with a little bit a of the stock. stock that I have with this. So basically, if you made a chicken stock with meat on the bone, yeah. then you could take that off the bone, yes. use the stock to yes. add to the sauce. That would be perfect. And then that you would be puree ideal. the sauce. Yes. That's the pureed sauce. Yes. And then you add that to the chicken. Yes. And all this color Is happens because of yeah. the ornato. Okay. So if you try that, that, that will give you an idea. Yes. Okay. And then that one. Um, how much chicken and how much? So we've got some poached chicken? chicken. I don't know how many they are, but I use you always buy. I always buy free ranch chicken breast mm -hmm. because I like to use. I wasn't vegetarian for a while. I'm not now. But <laughs> so it's hard for you to use the whole chicken. <laughs> it's like yeah. Well, I like I like is this is how we make for empanadas so arepas in my country. Yes. You can use the tides for your home things if you want it. But because you have more meat in the breast and we use a lot of oil, of course, mm. they yeah. will, you won't feel that it's like plain. Yeah. I think we're going to feel And traditionally, oh, yes. Traditionally, yeah. what oil was used. So I will use my hands. That's fine. <laughs> um, traditionally, what oil is used? Well, in Venezuela, we have a lot of corn oil, a uh, lot of seed oil. So uh, we don't have, but in some of the places, um, in my hometown, we used to use like uh, animal fat. Yes, so that would be the actual yes. traditional, like yeah, the lard. Yeah, the tradition before of yeah. all the processed food. So if you can get good lard, that would yeah. be perfect. And you can have like, a, well, we fry with pork fat and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. But you know, here if you're vegetarian or vegan. So not, you, you need to keep yeah. it olive oil so you can yeah, make all the yeah. different ones, yeah. So, but the olive oil in Venezuela is really expensive. Ah. So, because we don't produce any ol yeah. olives. Right. So, some of the people, like when I used to work in a bakery, we used to fry the donuts with, with the fat of the pork. Oh wow! Which is you think like donuts. oh yeah, yeah, or the empanada. So yeah. It's... Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah, I think that was the tradition, wasn't it? The pork fat or 
or yep. the fat from the tallow, uh, yep. the tallow from the stock. Okay, so what's next? We've got to wait for this to cook. Yes, so this is nearly ready. So how can you, you tell how, if it's ready? Well, you see how you have this beautiful gold color on the top? Yeah. And I always have this trick with the arepas. If you press it and keep the mark, it's not, not ready, ready. Okay. right? So I would say keep it just a couple of more minutes. This, this is super fast, so yeah. there's no reason why you can't make this yeah, make in the morning. Yeah. yeah, and even you can pre-cook them. Like if you want to cook them and freeze them or keep them in the fridge, what you can do is pre-cook them in this point, take them out, and let it cool down and you can keep in the freezer for six months. Ah, so and you can heat it up then, putting them in the oven or air fryer or whatever you use. Yeah. And that will be amazing. Okay, that's handy. Yes. Some people, instead to put in the... In instead the, of using the griddle. The grill, they just boil yeah. the, the arepa. So you just pop that into boiling water? In the boiling water for a couple of minutes. Once the arepa comes up in the water, Oh. They chuck in the oven and you have this fluffy. Oh, amazing. that's a nice it's, one it's too. It's really nice, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we've got to show you how to make some tortilla press. Yeah, this is a tortilla press. Yeah, makes this it is easy. To make empanadas, right? Yeah. So I usually that's where we need more the oil. This is to make the empanadas. Okay. So I will put a little bit of oil in here, right? I make the round, the bowl that I made before, I put it here, baking paper on top, and we press it. We press it, we press it, right? And I will say, this is perfect like that, right? Perfect. So, what, what I'm gonna do is, I will take a little bit of the chicken here, but I will make sure that it's not too juicy. Yeah, get rid of because this. Because if it's too juicy, it will make the empanada open. Ah, so you see, because okay, yeah. this is like a Play-Doh, as you said before. Yeah, yeah. And like how you put the water to put all the ingredients together that can make it split also. Okay, so you've got to so, so you, drain we it a will bit. Say, yes, we will say which size you want your empanadas. And you put this one on top. With your fingers, you press it down, right? And I will use, so, I will use this round thing. Yeah. Ah, I see. So you see? Here you go. And we have the it. empanada, you see? Wow, so you only use a little bit of filling. Yeah, so yeah. it's up to you what you want to put and how big you want to make the empanada, right? My problem is I always put too much filling and then things well, burst open. <laughs> yeah, so that's what happens. That's why, so you can cut it, if you see, this is where we got the filling. So even yeah. you can, it's a bit you, like ravioli. even you can keep it cutting it. Yeah, and right? then you've got more dough for What I one. do, because I do different flavors, and I usually what I do, if you want to identify them, because this one is the chicken one here in coffee and clay, we make three holes. Ah, yes, that's the So that way, we know that this one is the chicken one. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good idea. And, and what other we, fillings do you do? Uh, I do beef, we do cheese, we do black beans, vegan option, right? Yeah. So yeah. Easy. Yeah. You know what I love about this dough? Not only is it really simple, but um, yeah, that's, that's a lot of... Um, people that could eat that because there's no dairy, no gluten, no no, no eggs, no nothing. <laughs> wow. So it's really simple, it's just water, salt, yeah. and just a little bit of your oil that you prefer to use. Yeah. So you see we're still having the mark from the previous one. And this is fluffy, soft yeah. in the side and more cooked in this part. So as I said, you see how it's a little bit longer. Yeah, you see? Yeah. And you see how it's coming a little bit back, like response. Yeah. Okay. So we keep it like that. Nearly there. Nearly. This yeah. is a plantain. So it looks like a banana, but it and it's, it's kind of got the same texture, but it's not the same. Similar to the banana, right? Mm -hmm. Really similar. So for make this sandwich, I cut it in half. Okay. Right? And we fry these two parts in here. So this is this olive is, oil? Yeah, we use the olive oil. So you see? So yeah. we let them cook for a couple of minutes and I will show you how that what we're gonna do after. Okay. 
you cook this just in a frying pan with just a little bit of oil, like a centimeter? I would recommend, if you're going to make patacon, I would recommend or put it in the oven or in the air fryer. Okay. And you can put it on the grill also if you don't want to deep fry it. Yeah, you can you use it. You have a... the option to put this, as I put in there, but in the oven. Okay. But I would recommend you to put, like I have a little air fryer, right? So yeah. So when I do and put in the air fryer, I put for like about 10 minutes, I will put the empanada here. Okay. So Joe can try the empanada. Yeah, here. that's for me. Yeah. <laughs> and so what I do, I usually do, if we, I don't want to, you know, have deep fried food, I do um, put that in the air fryer, 10 minutes, 200 yeah. degrees, uh -huh. maybe in the oven, 10 minutes. And when it's slightly cold outside, it's cooked. Uh -huh. It's the first cook because we have to cook it twice. Okay, that's the first right? cook. And the second one, this is when it's the first cook and we flat, this is what we're gonna have. This lid, and you can still see the seeds yeah, from okay, the plantain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's really natural, it's not processed. The only and thing it makes is, you happy. Yeah, it makes you happy. <laughs> and what you can do if you don't wanna deep fry it again, yeah. you can put on the grill. Okay, so when you flatten that, you just use like the tortilla press? Yes. Okay. So that's what you can do after, you can pre, Put them on the top in here and let them go gold and that's and that's it. it. Yes. And you use that like bread. Yes. And okay. I fill it up with chicken, pork, or beef. Up to well, that's people. simple. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is really simple. And this arepa is looking good. It's looking amazing. Oh, I love arepa. It's so do I. <laughs> oh, the plantains looks. So I think that has to be because this is more. It's not a green plantain that have to be like a dark brown to take it out and be ready to okay. flatten it. Yeah. Yeah, you can, can you smell, smell it. Yeah. The, when it's corn, the, oh, when it's not so good. Like a roasted. Yeah. You see? The roast smell. Yes. So, so no measuring and you know it's ready when it smells right. Yes. <laughs> and, and it also has the little... And people think, sometimes they think when you open the arepa, always the, the dough is sticking your knife. And people think like, oh, it's raw, it's uncooked. It's not. It's a little bit sticky in the it's middle non, and it's meant it's, to be. Yeah, meant to be like yeah. that. So there's nothing wrong with that. It's yeah. the way that it passes. Well, you, otherwise it would be really dry. Yeah. yeah. In, in, in Venezuela, they used to have like, um, you know, when you have little babies at home and you have this left over in the night because you make arepas for whole family. So the leftover they put with butter and they make like a puree and they feed the kids one. Oh, nine yeah, old, yeah. One year old. That's the baby you, cereal. Yeah. <laughs> so you just put it together and fill that. There you go. Yeah, fill them with that. So I think we are ready, you see? Yeah, that looks ready. That looks ready. Beautiful. Oh, that's nice and brown now. You see, it's nice and brown. So if you are in this area, you can buy these empanadas made by Elena frozen. Yeah. Ready to go. And Already you filled. To, yeah, and you have to put it in the oven just for 10 minutes, 200 degrees, or in the air fryer. I think I'm gonna have to take home a, a bag of these to cook at home, because my family will be very happy. Especially Simeon. Yes, yeah, Simeon's <laughs> definitely wanting some. He was very excited to hear I was coming in. <laughs> yeah, he's really fun of the Venezuela food. He loves All right, it. so we have in here the plantain. Fingers crossed it's perfect too, <laughs> because it's, it's a little bit tricky. It okay. has to be cooked in the middle to can be able to have the whole thing, but you see that yep. it's really soft. It has to be quite soft. Yeah. Okay. So we press it, like making like a tortilla or something, all the way down. Wow, wow. Look at that. So it's, you see? Wow. And then you just can you can put it on the grill, yeah, or you can grill. put it on, because this one is salt, I would recommend to use a grill because it's easy. Yeah. And believe it or not, in my country we make empanadas with this also, because oh, as you, you can see, make empanadas with that. As so you, you see, you, you can put the, corn, yes, that's great. as you see, you can fill it up here, make the same thing, yeah. and you will have another way to have empanada. So you see, you put on the grill, you see, this is really nice and soft. Plantain. I suppose you could leave the baking paper on top until it finishes yeah, cooking yeah. and then turn it over. So you see, look, you see now that the arepa has like a little, yeah, it's like a little air inside? Yeah, a bit bouncy. Yes. So this is when we say it's ready. Yeah. You okay. See? You can, it's hollow. 
You can hear it. Yeah, it sounds hollow. Okay. Hollow is it? Okay. That's the word. <laughs> In here, we have the arepa already. As you see, you can touch it, it's warm, right? So I will hold this one with the cloth because it's helped me to don't burn myself. So you see how the smoke is coming out, oh, yeah. which means it's ready. So you see what I said yeah. before about yep. the knife? Yeah, that is meant to be like that. Natural, yeah. So we always add butter in it, you see? Yep. A little bit of butter. Or a lot. <laughs> so we have the chicken that we have made from the previous thing before, right? So we put a little bit of chicken. We have in here some avocados. So in my country, we fill it up like this, especially in my hometown. Other places, they use the arepa as a um, um, side. So side, we use yeah. more like a lunch or dinner or breakfast. Yeah. So of course, because we are from the coast, we like a massive food. They have to look like... <laughs> has wow. to be a lot. Yeah. And this is a wasakaka, which is a coriander sauce with garlic and avocado. And that gives a beautiful flavor. Wasakaka? Yes. <laughs> it's made from? Coriander, garlic. Coriander, garlic, avocado. Yes. And has a um, avocado to make it creamy, yes. right? Yum. And you can add mayonnaise or whatever you want to, to uh, make it more. Yes. Do you usually add, is that what? Yes, a little bit. So in here, I will add a little bit of feta cheese because we put cheese on everything. And so, so feta cheese, is that traditional for you guys? I can say there is a similar cheese. It's similar. And okay. we use like the halloumi cheese also. Ah, yum. So two of the cheese we call um, queso fresco. Yeah, that's a more fresh. similar to halloumi. Okay. Yes, like a fresh, fresh cheese. And the, the, um, Feta cheese reminds me to the queso, um, they call, they make it like a matua cheese, a little bit more hard, it's still fresh. A matua cheese, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. but it's still, it's a little bit more hard than okay. the yep. halloumi. So this is the arepa. Yum! <laughs> I want to eat that. Oh, we better check these. <laughs> Looking ready to turn over. Is so it? you see this one. You know what that reminds me of? Of what? Fossilized banana. Oh, really? <laughs> you know what? It looks like a fossil <laughs> in the rock. Well, probably something like that. <laughs> so I will use this big spatula. You uh, see? Yep. You see how it is? Yep. So with this one, I will make it just a little bit of cheese and butter. Okay. Because I want to make it dry. Because so would this one be made with a more green? This is a green banana. Green. That's a green plantain. A planting, sorry. In, and this in, is the right, so the, you can see the difference, yeah. yeah. The butter. The butter. So you can use it like a wrap. Yeah, well actually we'll fold it like this. Ah, yes. And you can make, and you can put like a sour cream on top. Oh, yeah. And if you do live in far north Queensland, you can get these plantains from Rusty's Markets, can't you? Yes. Yeah. Use another place with, um, BFO. You know the shopping oh, yeah, center. DFO. Yeah. They have this um, Vietnamese fresh food market. Ah, and that's they have a good all idea. the type of plantain. Sometimes they are a little bit more expensive. Yeah. But I buy them from, from them yeah. also. Yeah. So what I do I pre cook all of them and I keep them frozen, which is ideal if you have a busy, busy life. You can pre cook these and have all the freeze. So you pre cook them and squash them, yes. flatten them, and yes. then freeze them. Yes. Do you need baking paper in between? Yes. Yeah. I would recommend you have a baking paper, and you can keep it for I think six months will be perfect. Okay. And you can use any time you know that yeah. you want to have. Just get it out of the and freezer. And even you can make just one little if you think that they both are too much. Yeah. And you can make like a little taco, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a really good yes. idea. I love that idea. I'm going to have to start getting plantains every time I go to Cairns. Yeah. <laughs> or just come love, by them off I you. I love the plantain. It needs so many things that you can do with it. Yeah. So in here we have beef that's been slow cooking. Mm. Is it just in... Oh, it's got the annatto oil. Oh, I, yes. This is a natural oil. It has an oil. It's a fat that they own. You can smell it. Yeah, it yeah, It smells yeah. really good. So this red color is from the annatto because I add annatto oil. So I put some garlic. 
in a small we call sweet sweet chili sweet chili yeah but we call sweet chili because it's not as spicy you mean like a capsicum it's like a capsicum but they are tiny baby okay. capsicums okay and they have a really nice flavor. and what cut of meat is that this is a brisket brisket yeah so yeah and how long do you think that's been cooking i like eight hours we slow cook for eight hours yep. so i like that the flavors go inside yeah and this is so what we use to fill it up yes that. We're gonna fill it up the patacon with this one in a minute. Okay. So you see? So it's really nice. Yeah. Smells amazing. Yeah, it is. Oh, you have a perfect plantain cook and it's yeah. crispy. Yeah. You can. You yeah, see? it's crunchy. It's, crispy, it's, crunchy. it's like toast. Yes, it's like toast. <laughs> so now we're gonna grab this one and we will repeat everything again because we have like an ABC, you know, in, in Venezuela also with the ingredients. So this is my queen, the wasakaka. <laughs> the queen. <laughs> the queen, yeah. I always, so I fill it up with the beef that we just had in there, right? And we put avocados, put a little bit of the avocado in here, right? Well, a little bit too much. <laughs> Pico de gallo some lettuce and some cheese yeah yeah all right and ta-da oh, here is look at that beautiful so this one um you said pico de gallo yeah can you explain what that is in the case pico de gallo here that is a red onion a coriander and diced tomato with olive oil um, pepper and salt and that's what we use for the nachos for the burritos yeah. they are like the ABC in South American and yeah. South American yeah so okay. we're gonna go out with these yeah, meals to try I'm coming okay, here we are we're ready we have the empanada the, now what do you call this one patacon patacon but I will I in the menu here I call plantain sandwich plantain sandwich yes yeah the brisket and the salad and uh, how do you say that sauce? Arepa with the wasakaka. Arepa with the wasakaka sauce. <laughs> and what do you call the chicken filling? Just chicken. Oh, just a, a pollo, yeah. Okay, and this is the little... Plantain with the, with the cheese. Filled with the cheese. Yeah, so yeah. which will be the same as a patacón. Hey, look at that, guys. Who's hungry? <laughs> I am. <laughs> Let's me taste too, it. Me too, me too. Yeah, you have to try. Yeah. Here we go, let's cut this open and have a look inside. Delicious. It's warm. And it's really good. Yum. Thanks so much for showing us all that. I'm gonna to have to find recipes to link to because everyone's gonna to wanna to try the um, recipes, I think. But most of it, like you say, it's the sort of thing that you can sort of figure out by feel, yes. isn't it? Yeah. I think it's really simple food. Yeah. And if you see in South America, we, we have a lot of uh, carbohydrates, but they are really good also. Yeah, they're so not I just think, refined white yes. flour. Yeah, so yeah. I think it's something that fills you up for uh, the whole day and makes you feel satisfied. Because people, when they have them, they say, oh, they are really filling. That's right, you don't need and it. And you don't need to, you know. Two meals a day. <laughs> yes. So I said, this is a, if you ask me and you are celiac and you can have bread, this will be 100% recommended by me because it's no other ads in this. It's not all starchy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. This yeah. is a good option. Thank yes. you so much for showing us. No, and you're I, very welcome and thank you for coming here. Thank you. And if you guys are ever in far north Queensland and you're on the Atherton Tablelands, you need to pop by this lovely cafe in Yungaburra. You can even make something out of clay while you're here. Yeah, <laughs> we can. This is the cheese filled, what do you call it? Eh, papita de yuca, cassava balls. Say it again. Papita de yuca, papita. cassava balls. No, I'm not going to try and say it. <laughs> and the empanada. And what's in these ones? Beans. Black beans, black but beans. I soak the black beans so they are not tinned. Okay. We make everything from scratch. From scratch. No tinned beans. No, no tinned, no, no, no. <laughs> no. And when you go to cook these, can you just pop them in the oven? 
10 minutes, 200 degrees. 10 Just minutes, 200 degrees. Frozen degree. as they are, you pop them in there and they will be perfect in 10 minutes. That is amazing. All right, yeah. thanks. We will definitely enjoy these. Woo, so exciting. The treats here while we're at it. Yeah, we make this one. These are cocadas. And they're made and with, the with the panela, which is a cane sugar, the brown. That's, yeah, not refined. Not refined. Yeah. yeah, it's like a raw, raw sugar. Yeah. So you melt it and you shred the coconut and you cook it. Is it um, fresh coconut? Yes, oh, and it's gluten-free and dairy-free. So that's it, coconut yeah. and panela. Yeah, and this is a fudge, milk fudge. And what's that? There is a gluten-free, but it's just milk in it like a fudge you cook it and you can cook with the white sugar or you can cook it with the raw sugar the vanilla also. yeah wow so it's really yeah interesting <laughs> we've got the giggles because i didn't know what she meant by fudge and she said fudge you know what fudge is she means fudge fudge, <laughs> fudge. <laughs> well okay yeah. so it's a white yeah white it's a fudge. Milk fudge milk Fudge. And we put a cloth in the middle to okay. give a little bit of flavor. Oh, so it's nice. Yeah. Yum. You guys enjoyed that? It was a lot of fun. And mm -hmm. I'm now going to have fun eating it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Thank Elena. You. Bye. Bye.